So the Minnesota Vikings continue to make moves on this offseason after they released Amir Abdullah, who's now with the Carolina Panthers. They traded Stephen Weatherly away to the Denver Broncos two days ago. This is recorded on Monday, and they traded him away on Saturday. Now we're taking a look into this. Minnesota Vikings are quietly making some moves, and the reason why they traded away Stephen Weatherly, although they didn't get it much here, and the reason why they cut Amir Abdullah was to make room for these rookies who are now coming off of IR. So Minnesota Vikings have traded away Stephen Weatherly to the Denver Broncos to uh, back up both Bradley Chubb and Von Miller for them he'll be playing outside linebacker as he did in college with Vanderbilt before the Minnesota Vikings traded him and moved him to defensive end so his main role is just as a pass rusher here Minnesota Vikings have released have um, received a 2022 seventh round draft pick after giving up their 2023 seventh round draft pick so really received nothing there I mean they trade seventh round draft picks and gave away Stephen Weatherly pretty much for free now the reason why they gave away Stephen Weatherly was just to make room for the next guy up and that is Patrick Jones who the Vikings drafted in the third round of this year's draft out of pit so it feels like every year the minnesota vikings are giving away their guys to both carolina to the denver broncos to saints and it's weird that teddy bridgewater has actually started for all three of them bridgewater is now with the broncos and there's a lot of broncos fans who are also vikings fans at this point there's a pretty good relationship with the two and this is just one of the trades that we should be seeing coming forward, going forward, as uh, George Payton, their GM, was also with the Minnesota Vikings and was with the Vikings when they actually drafted Stephen Weatherly. Um, he had a say in actually drafting Stephen Weatherly in the seventh round, which was a great draft pick. Now, Weatherly has done nothing for the Vikings this season and really only had two years of shine with the Minnesota Vikings when he was backing up Everson Griffin and Daniel Hunter. But as of lately, these last two seasons hasn't done anything with us or the Carolina Panthers. He started nine games with the Carolina Panthers in 2020, where he racked up zero sacks, starting nine games at defensive end for them. So although he had a couple of years of shine, does not look good as a start. And the Vikings try to use him this year and still has gotten zero sacks with the Vikings. So really gave him away for free here. I mean, the Vikings are still, this is not a financial move. This is not a trade that's going to help the Vikings financially as still this added more to our dead cap. Vikings are now over $5 million in dead cap after this adds another one and a half million as Stephen Weatherly was on a $2 million contract. 500,000 has been paid and this is a one and a half million in dead cap. So why did the Vikings trade away Stephen Weatherly? Because this is financially makes no sense. I mean, you're going to continue to pay him this money. There's no reason why the Vikings should have cut Stephen Weatherly, right? Well, if you take a look at why the Vikings brought him in, the Vikings brought in Stephen Weatherly to be a defensive end alongside Daniel Hunter. You know who's been a defensive end alongside Daniel Hunter? Has exceeded expectations. Everson Griffin. Everson Griffin, the 34-year-old defensive end who has played I believe this is 13th season in the NFL, and a lot of that has been with the Minnesota Vikings. 34 years old has been dominant force on this Vikings defense and earns that earn that starting role. Outside of him, you have DJ Wanham. DJ Wanham's also looking pretty good. I mean, his last season was better, but again, you have DJ Wanham, you have Everson Griffin. There is no reason why the Vikings should have had Stephen Weatherly. They brought him in in the first place after the Vikings were coming off of the 2020 season being the worst game, the worst team against the pass. Well, what did they do in the offseason? They've solely focused on the defensive line. You take a look at the Vikings starting defensive line in 2020. Nobody's still here. You had Afadi Odenabo, Jalen Holmes, Jaleel Johnson, and Shamar Stefan. None of those players are still with the Minnesota Vikings. As a matter of fact, the only Viking who played with the Minnesota Vikings last year that is still on the team, who played with the team last year, is DJ Wanham. And that's why going into the offseason, Minnesota Vikings defensive line was the biggest focus this offseason, and they focused a lot on the off on the defensive line. Uh, the drafting Patrick Jones and Janarius Robinson in the third and fourth round, bringing in Stephen Weatherly and Everson Griffin, uh, bringing in Delvin Tomlinson. They also brought in Sheldon Richardson. Multiple players that the Vikings have brought in. Why? Because defensive linemen want to play here. This is a great place to play for defensive linemen, and it's really the only position that teams really want to play for. Because our defensive coaching staff is great. Say what you want about Mike Zimmer. Say what you want about Rick Spielman. Our defensive coaching staff is great. And that is why defensive players like defensive linemen want to come to play here. It's why Patrick Peterson wanted to play here as well. It's a great place for defensive players to play. And that's why a lot of veterans come here to play with our coaching staff. With that being said, that is why Stephen Weatherly came here. He took a pay cut to come with the Minnesota Vikings. And did absolutely nothing. Stephen Wesley did nothing with the Minnesota Vikings, and that is why they traded him away for essentially nothing. Now, you might ask yourself, why did the Vikings not just decide to cut Stephen Weatherly? Cutting Stephen Weatherly would have been the worst decision for the Minnesota Vikings. And the reason why is because you look at the, our division rivals right now, the Packers would have took him. Packers would have took him. He would have gave him some information on our defensive, uh, our defensive scheme and would have just ruined our season, really, when the Vikings play him uh, if he was 
cut and they're picked up by the Packers or Bears or Lions. Really, any other team or the NFC as a whole would have been bad for an NFC team to be able to get their hands on uh, Stephen Weatherly. But him going to the Broncos, great job for him to back up both Nick Chubb and backing up Von Miller, who are one of the best linebacker duos in the NFL. So what does this mean for the Minnesota Vikings? While financially it doesn't make a lot of sense, you're freeing up space for the next guy up. Who is the next guy up? Patrick Jones. Janarius Robinson. Now Janarius Robinson is on IR right now, so we're just looking at Patrick Jones here. Third round draft pick out of the 2021 draft out of Pittsburgh. Minnesota Vikings, great draft pick for them to take Patrick Jones in the third round. It might have been a little bit of an overdraft, but once again, with Andre Patterson as a defensive line coach, there's no such thing as overdrafting on a defensive lineman. But you take a look at this now. Minnesota Vikings traded away Stephen Weatherly. Not going to be a business, not going to be a game changing move for the Vikings, obviously. I mean, it really doesn't help us at all, other than the fact that he's no longer with our team and Patrick Jones is likely better. But you take a look at this, though. There's a lot of notable, a lot of recognizable faces on the Denver Broncos team right now. Obviously, the quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater, who's. You can put him on the list of Vikings legends. The only reason why is because he was a loved player by the Minnesota Vikings and had one great season with the Vikings. Now that season was ended by a terrible Blair Walsh chip shot field goal where he shanked it wide left and take that away. It was a great season. 11-5 season. Teddy Bridgewater led us to. And if it wasn't for injuries, he might still be our starting quarterback. And I'm very happy for him that he's still starting in the NFL. Outside of Teddy Bridgewater, you take a look at the defensive side of the ball as a whole. Stephen Weatherly, obviously, with the Minnesota Vikings, who was just traded. And then Shamar Steffen, who started last season with the Minnesota Vikings. On top of that, you have Mike Boone and Brett Jones on offense. So a lot of recognizable faces on the Denver Broncos team. And like I said, it goes a lot of our players go to the Broncos, Saints, and Panthers. But this is where I go to my next thing. And I have a prediction to make. Not very often do I make predictions other than my previews for the episodes, but... I have a prediction to make, and I'm almost positive this is going to hit. The bold prediction is Mike Zimmer will be the Denver Broncos defensive coordinator next season. You take a look at the Minnesota Vikings regime right now. This Spielman Zimmer regime, which has been okay. Vikings have been consistently above average of a team. We don't want to be below, uh, above average. We want to be Super Bowl contending teams. If the Vikings do not at least make an NFC championship, even if they make an NFC championship. If the Vikings don't make a Super Bowl, Mike Zimmer's gone. There's no question about this. At this point in the season, Zimmer wants to win because he wants to keep his job. Mike Zimmer loves being a head coach here. The players even like him as a head coach. Now, I don't know about that Kirk-Zimmer uh, relationship right now, although it looks great. I don't know if that's just for cameras or if they're, if they're faking it or if that's real because I don't know what happens off cameras other than just what's on the broadcast. But Mike Zimmer, I really do believe he'll be the defensive coordinator for the Denver Broncos next season as he already we already have a good relationship with the Denver Broncos, obviously, with uh, the Peyton guy being their GM, who was also with the Minnesota Vikings before. Also, on top of that, another fun fact, the first game Stephen Weatherly ever played the preseason week one after they drafted him in 2016 was actually against the Denver Broncos. So he's going where his uh, whole career really started. But you take a look at this, Mike Zimmer, he's probably not going to be with the Vikings next season. Because the Vikings shouldn't be competing for a Super Bowl when you look at it. Our chances to win the division are around 17%. If we don't win the division, we're going to have to go on the road in the playoffs. And that doesn't usually go so well for the Minnesota Vikings, unless if we play the New Orleans Saints. But you take a look at this. Mike Zimmer, he'll likely be gone. You look at who would need him, the Denver Broncos. Nobody's going to hire Mike Zimmer as a head coach when he's 65 years old as a defensive guy. No one's going to hire him as a head coach. A lot of teams will be looking for him as a defensive coordinator, and there is no better spot for him to go than the Denver Broncos, who right now they have the um, Ed Donatel, I think his name is, I'm saying it right. Uh, he has really done nothing for them the last three seasons. Their defense has just been okay. They have one of the best linebacker duels and one of the best safety duels in the NFL and yet consistently don't look like it. So I would expect that he be gone after three seasons and Mike Zimmer to come in and really lead that defense, especially when you have players like Shamar Steffen and Stephen Weatherly, who he's already coached and are already there. On top of that, they have a very good cornerback room. I mean, with obviously Pat Sertan, who they drafted in the first round, they also grabbed Kyle Fuller from free agency, uh, Ronald Darby and Bryce Callahan on top of that. So their defense looks really good. Good. And one of the best, one of the look, you look at their defense and offense as a whole, Denver Broncos should be competing. Thing is, they're in the AFC West where they're going to have to with Chargers. Obviously, they have Justin Herbert in the division. They have Patrick Mahomes in the Chiefs in their division who are have a losing record right now, but still so do the Denver Broncos. So you take a look at this and then they have Vegas on top of that. They're in just one of the toughest divisions in the NFL, but should be competing for a Super Bowl and bringing in Mike Zimmer because 
If Mike Zimmer loses a job as a head coach to the Minnesota Vikings, which he will as long as the Vikings are not in the very are not in the Super Bowl, he'll he'll lose his job. But you take a look at this. He's not going to end his career on that. He's not going to end this long career on that. You take a look at it, Minnesota Vikings. He's won, I believe it was two games, both against the New Orleans Saints so far in his whole head coaching career. He wants to go to a team and win. He wants to go to the Denver Broncos, where he already has a good relationship with them and could be defensive coordinator to one of the league's toughest defense with Von Miller and Bradley Chubb. Now, Bradley Chubb is on IR, but one of the best linebacker duos right there. And then Justin Simmons and Kareem Jackson, who are a great safety duo. Let me know what y'all think.